In this video, I'm going to go over how to deal with really big exponents um, for things like a cryptography class or computer programming um, and other such cases. There are three methods, uh, modular exponentiation, Fermat's little theorem, and Euler's theorem. Um, but before I do that, there are a couple things I'm going to assume you know how to do. And one is, I assume you know how to use modular arithmetic, and two, I'm going to assume you know basic exponent rules. Alright, so you can learn how to do each of these three, but another key thing is to know which to pick. So I'm going to start out with saying you're trying to solve something with this form, x to the power y mod n. If n is prime, if the modulus is prime, we want to use Fermat's. Otherwise, we still have to pick between our other two options, modular exponentiation and Euler's. If x is small, so right here, if this number right here is small, we want to use modular exponentiation. Otherwise, we're going to use Euler's. Now, I know small is kind of relative. It's relative to how much computational power you have. But just to give you an idea, like I might say 5 is small, 75 might not be. Um, I'm going to give three examples, one for each of them now. The first example is we want to solve 3 to the power 1000 mod 23. Now, n, remember the modulus, is 23, and 23 is prime. So therefore, we're going to use Fermat's. Recall that Fermat's theorem says that a to the n minus 1, remember a is just any number, equals 1 mod n, if n is prime, and our n is. Therefore, a, any number, 3 in our case from right here, to the n minus 1, which is 23 minus 1, 22, will equal 1 mod n, mod 23, because it's prime, because 23 is prime. Therefore, we want to find 3 to the 22 times some integer k. Um, how am I going to do that? Pretty straightforward. Uh, 1,000 divided by 22, 1,000 because that was the exponent up here equals 45.4545 continued. Um, however, the, the whole number here is what we want to pull from that, um, which I'm going to rewrite 1,000 equals 22 times 45 plus 10. So essentially what I have here, um, I've just rewritten this right here from the beginning as this. Now the reason I did that is because 3 to the 22nd power is 1. If I do it 45 times, it's still 1 by Fermat's theorem. Um, so I just rewrote this, as you should be able to figure out, um, by basic exponent rules. But all this right here amounts to 1 by Fermat's little theorem. Therefore, I rewrite 1 times 3 to the 10th power mod 23. 3 to the 10th power is much smaller, much more manageable. Um, I worked it out here, sort of spread it out three as 3 to the 8th um, times 3 to the 2nd equals 6 times 9 mod 23 equals 54 mod 23 equals 8 mod 23 as our solution. However, once you've got it down to the 3 to the 10th power, that is a much, much, much smaller number than 3 to the 1,000th power. Um, so we have reduced it tremendously and made it manageable, and this is just um, the simple math part of it. All right, so next, do another example. 3 to the 547 mod 825. Now we know that 825 is not prime, therefore we do not want to use Fermat's. Our other options are modular exponentiation and Euler's. 
Modular exponentiation is for when x is small. Remember, we have this form x to the y mod n. In our case, x is 3 again. And uh, we'll say that's small. That's small enough. Therefore, we're going to use the modular exponentiation, and there are a few steps for this. First, we want to break down y, that's the exponent, into the powers of 2. So our y, our exponent, was 547, which I have broken into 512 plus 32 plus 2 plus 1, which is the same thing as writing 2 to the 9th plus 2 to the 5th plus 2 to the 1st plus 2 to the 0. That's the first step. We broke down the exponent into powers of 2. Next, we want to calculate x, our number here, a small number, to the powers of 2. And what I mean by that is we want to do 3 to the 2 to the 0, which is the same thing as writing 3 to the 1, which is just 3, obviously. And then we want to do 3 to the 2 to the 1, which is 3 squared, which is 9. And you can see how we did 3 to the 2 squared. 3 to the 2 to the 3, 3 to the 2 to the 4, all the way up. We didn't skip anything, all the way up to 9. Now I stopped at 9 because the largest exponent here was 9. Now, a couple um, notes to make this a little bit shorter of a calculation process is that each time we move up a line or down a line, we are just squaring the previous. Um, term. So 3 to the 2 to the 2, 3 to the 4th is obviously just 9 squared, which is 81. And then 81 squared, 786. And we can just sort of skip this part um, and just square the last term. Saves you a little bit of writing, saves you some computational power. Um, and note that we can also at each step, we can take the number mod 825. So 786 squared equals 696 mod 825. And as I wrote over here, by taking the mod at each step, we can keep the numbers low and calculable. Um, so each time we do that, we're just squaring the last number and making sure we take the modulus each time to keep the numbers low. Another thing that can save you time is that once you get to a number you've already seen before, like right here, I have the number 81. Well, we had the number 81 back there. We know that we're just repeating a pattern. So from there, I literally just copied down um, after the 81, copied, copied 786, and then 696 and then 141, all the way down. I just copied the pattern until I got to um, the last, last one I wanted. Now the next step is to pick the ones from our exponent. Now if you recall, our exponent, which was 547, which we broke down into this, um, Okay, well, remember we want 3 to the 547, which I'm going to rewrite as 3 to all this. I just took this, plugged it in here, instead of 547. And from exponent rules, we know that I can rewrite it as this, 3 to the 2 to the 9 times 3 to the 2 to the 5, 3 to the 2 to the 1, 3 to the 2 to the 0. Um, and then up here, in my little blue boxes, we have... Um, what each of these numbers equals mod 825. Okay, so where we have 3 to the 9, I took the 141. 3 to the 5 also happens to be 141. And so I just pulled those numbers and multiplied them all. Those numbers are small enough to be completely manageable and um, we're able to solve 
that this equals 537 mod 825. All right, so one more example. We have 123 to the power 562 mod 100. 100 is 100 is not odd. I should say not prime. It's not odd either, but uh, 100 is not prime. Um, so we don't use for mods. There we go. Um, fix that. 100 is not prime. Therefore, we don't want to use for mods. And then our x, our 123 here, is not, that's not really small. So we don't want to use modular exponentiation because that would be a lot of work. We could, but that would be a lot of work. Hence, uh, we're going to use Euler's theorem. So I have rewritten the problem with colors. And note that the goal of Euler's theorem is to make the exponent, 562, smaller. If the exponent is smaller, we're making our problem easier to deal with. So, how we do that is we want to take 562 mod 5n. Now, what's 5n? We have a nice little formula here. 5n is n times the products of 1 minus 1 over p. Now, p are the prime factors of n. So, naturally, the first thing we want to do is find the prime factors of n. Remember, n was 100, our modulus, which is equal to 5 times 5 times 2 times 2. So therefore, our p's will be 5 and 2. We do not need repeats. Again, we do not need the 5 twice. We don't need the 2 twice, just one of each. Therefore, we can calculate 5n using the formula is n times the products of 1 minus 1 over 5, one of our p's, times 1 minus 1 over 2, our other p, which is just 40. So therefore, we can go back and remember we wanted to take um, 562 mod 5n. So now down here we have 562 mod 5n equals 562 mod 40 which equals 2 mod 40. We can do that. That's pretty easy. And now we have simplified it to 123 to the 2. 123 squared mod n, which is obviously way smaller and completely manageable. So we were able to solve it and get that um, this equals 29 mod 100. Um, these rules are not not completely, um, well, in some cases you might have to finagle them and use different rules in different situations, but as gen in general, the guidelines that I just went over work pretty well. Um, a lot of programs use modular exponentiation since that one's pretty generic and can be used in many, many cases. Um, when the other two don't work. So that's um, much more common, but it can also take a really long time when either Fermat's or Euler's would be faster. So it's sort of, it can be sort of a last resort in some cases, because um, these can be very efficient when they work. Also have a side note here, which is not entirely related to these types of problems, but um, good to note. When you use mod 100, you are finding the last two digits of a number. For example, 587 mod 100 equals 87 mod 100. You just took the last two digits. Likewise, mod 10 or 1000 is the last digit or three digits um, of a number, and that comes from the number of zeros. So, all right, so, um, 
if you apply that to what we had down here, if you took 123 squared, I don't have a calculator on me, um, but whatever that number is, these are the last two digits of it, just as a general interesting note. Um, to review, the, the three, the, the way we picked, which one to use, if n was prime, we use Fermat's. If x is small, if, if n is not prime, then we can't use Fermat's. Then is, if x is small, we use modular exponentiation. Otherwise, we want to use Euler's, um, if at all feasible. The only time it wouldn't be would probably be if you don't know the prime factors of a number, in which case that's a pretty bizarre number. Well, maybe not, but anyway, the point stands. And then we would go back to modular exponentiation as our last resort, if you will.